Hasn't been started in years. Sump oil in the bottom, it's gonna burn all the oil off. It's a hundred years old. I can't believe how quiet the engine is, even though it's got these external valves here. It's very quiet. put a hundred dollar bill on the gas tank at the bar and he'd bet anybody there he could start at first kick. I heard he took a lot of hundred dollar bills home. What a cool bike. As soon as I got on the road and put it in third gear, it felt you could really feel that Harley DNA, the V twin torque, Springer front end, everything's all metal. There's, there's no no plastic on this thing, man. You hurt your knuckles on this before you hurt it. It's rock solid. Thing's a hundred years old. We haven't even this hasn't even been detailed or wa even washed since we got it. It's been uh, in Mr. Zahner's living room, well, since the seventies, and uh, he used to ride it. He would take it out to the bars and. Bet people a hundred bucks you start a first kick. It starts remarkably easy. I stalled it at least three times and fired it right up first or second kick every time. Shifts about as good as an average shovel head first, second, third, just bing, bang, boom, no problem. The foot clutch takes a little getting used to in the suicide shift. So this is your uh, this is your front brake right here, and this is how you shift it. It's low, neutral, second, and high. It's a three-speed transmission. So you shift it, it's called a suicide shift. And then you've got your foot clutch all the way back is to park or to stop, and all the way forward is to go. Pretty cool. It's the M Lamp Co. from Los Angeles. The headlight and the taillight work, and they're 100 years old. Holy shit. Look at the floorboards on this thing, man. What a cool machine. The uh, the push rods are exposed, and the rockers, freaking awesome. Welcome to the second floor of the New England Motorcycle Museum here in Rockville, Connecticut. Hopefully you enjoyed the riding portion of this video half as much as I did. What a what a sensory overload rush riding this bike and what an honor. I can't say that I've been more nervous riding any other bike. I've ridden 7,000 motorcycles in the museum here because this is a priceless piece of Americana. Americana. It's a 1928 Harley-Davidson JD. If you follow the channel, you know this came from the Zahner collection, Harold Zahner. Big time motorcyclist, famous in the Bakersfield, California area because he owned b and Cycle for 40 years. Uh, the largest independent Harley Davidson dealer and uh, multi-brand dealership in the area. His collection of 42 bikes was passed on to his son, Mark, who um, was having some medical issues recently, called us up, said he was going in for surgery the following Tuesday. He called me on a Wednesday and he said, can you come this weekend? And I said, absolutely. I got on a plane, flew to Bakersfield. By, by uh, 10 a.m. Saturday morning, we had a deal. I purchased all 42 bikes. And this is the oldest bike in the collection. And it is an absolute freaking diamond. Um, there's a story about this bike I gotta tell you. Harold Zahner had this thing so perfectly tuned and it, we don't have it tuned quite perfectly right now, but I, I have been able to start it in the first two to three kicks. It started first kick a couple times, but he'd put a hundred dollar bill on the tank and he rode this bike. Make no mistake, this is something he rode. And he would put a hundred dollar bill in the tank and bet anybody a hundred dollars that he could start at first kick. And, and I had heard he had never lost that bet. Uh, this, is, this is a 74 cubic inch JD. This was the fastest motorcycle on the road in that day, uh, capable of, of, of speeds over 80 miles an hour. And it could be modified to go even faster because they had the, 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 the Harley race team and the hill climb team. They ran the same, the same thing. And this was originally built around 1915 for the military effort in, in, in uh, World War I. And it was converted for civilian use after that around 1918. And, and they, they ran these up until 28. This was the last year of the JD. This is the original frame. It has the original fuel tank, the original bars uh, and all the cycle parts are original. The, the fenders have been modded because, well, in Bakersfield, California, if you wanted to run with the cool cats, you had to 
modify your bike. We put this model up on the Billy Blythe, grab this out of our archives. Uh, we have a huge collection of, of vintage models. Uh, so you can see uh, all the componentry on here is original, e even the fender, it's just been bobbed. Um, spectacular piece of Americana. Look at the floorboards of the Harley Davidson logos on the floorboards. Uh, this is a three speed transmission, 74 cubic inches, 1200 cc, so that's a big engine. Starts easily, rides really nice, and you really feel that, that Harley DNA riding this. So I've been riding Harley since 1990. I have everything up to a 2024 CVO Harley in the collection here. And uh, this is just a spectacular machine. Harold Zahner and his son Mark, these are guys after my own heart. When I, when I, when I walked into Harold's living room with his pool table, it was surrounded by 15 of the nicest classic vintage Harleys I'd ever seen, including this. And uh, it was on the green shag carpeted floor that, that had been there since the 70s. And beautiful home in Bakersfield. He had a, a Prevost bus garage out back. He had a big Prevost that he used to haul his Harleys to the events in. And he lived the good life. He had an awesome, awesome hobby that he shared with his, with his son and his grandson. In fact, the 93 Cow Glide from the collection was bought as a family heirloom for his, for his grandson, um, who was in the video uh, that, that, uh, at his house. Um, same year as his son was born. That bike had seven miles on it. Guys, this is original Springer front end. Uh, I was told this is the first year of the expanding shoe front brake, um, last year of the JD, and it's just, a, it's just a phenomenal piece of Americana. If you come around this side, um, I'm, I'm gonna be 60 next year, so I'm not even gonna try doing this, but Ronnie, my cameraman, is how old are you, Ronnie? Oh, 31. Can you, he's got 2020. Can you read the generator uh, notes? Generator tag says, Harley number 1985, patented in 1919. Harley Davidson, down there on the generator. 1919, guys, it, it's 2024. This bike's gonna be 100 years old in four years. Can you read off the VIN number of the original engine cases? A uh, VIN number reads 28J4387. This is the original um, primary cover here. Bill, what did you call this design? Chevron. Chevron. Chevron is a as far, it's just, just remarkable that, that, that the bike is, hey, some of my biggest videos ever done for the channel, like my number three and number four most viewed videos that I have, I'm talking three million and two million views on the videos were of motorcycle junkyards. And Billy and I were talking earlier, there's not a single Harley Davidson in either of those junkyards with thousands of bikes. And there's a reason why. These things were built to military spec uh, the, and they were built to last a lifetime and they didn't change the design every year like the Japanese did. They would keep this, this they ran this very design right here from 1915 to, to 1928. So a 13 year run. So there were parts available and to this day, you can still get parts for this motorcycle. This is the first year it had the uh, air cleaner uh, uh, system on the motorcycle also. Uh, three speed shifter. They call this a suicide shifter. Um, foot clutch, it's a heel toe clutch. Just, uh, this is a, the uh, timing advance on this side right here. So you, you, re you really, you really got to think about what you're doing when you ride this motorcycle with the, the, the it, it's a sense, it's a, like I said, I started off the video by saying it's a sens sensory overload. It's, it's just awesome. It's like, you'll never see any of these parked in front of a psychologist's <laughs> office because all you focus about when you're on this bike is riding, all your problems just disappear. And um, now he had this in his living room for, well, 50 years and he would ride it, but every night you'd come home and look at this bike and, and get great joy from seeing it, it really is a piece of modern art. This is the original saddle on the bike, as far as I know, and sadly it was not torn when we got it. And we've been riding it around for the last week. Jimmy rode it, I rode it. Um, Bill, did you ride it? Oh, yeah. Billy rode it. So s sadly, uh, the leather um, gave up the ghost here, so it needs to be recovered, but... Um, it could easily be done. Things that added to the sensory the overload is I've been riding motorcycles since the 70s, and this lever right here is always the clutch on every motorcycle I've ridden. This is a front brake, and it works pretty good too, so you gotta be careful uh, to hit that. And as far as the fork, zoom in on the fork. That's the original linked spring fork. I called it a Springer. It's a, it's a, to me, it's a Springer, but it's a predecessor of the Springer. It's not actually a Springer, but that is, that is a um, super rare piece 
of Americana right there. So this 1200cc, 22 horsepower, 45 degree V-twin was called the F-head, also known as the inlet over exhaust or pocket valve engine. And I, I, in, the, in the writing portion of the video, if you, hopefully you caught that, these push rods right here actually activate the valves in, in, in there. On a modern Holley, those are covered with a chrome cover, so you don't get to see it moving. But to me, it, uh, I just, I couldn't believe the first time we fired this up how quiet the motor was. You would expect it to be more, you know, like piston slap or um, a lot of valve noise, but it didn't have that much. It did smoke quite a bit. Now, these are a total loss oil system where, where uh, when they came out with the knuckleheads, it was, it was a, uh, they had an oil tank right here and the oil would circulate through with, this, with an oil, oil pump of sorts. Uh, th this right here, it has a pump on it. When you're going up a hill, you're supposed to pump this to put more oil into it. And it actually uses the oil and spills a little bit on the, ro on the road, but it uses, a, they say, was it a quart every 500 miles is what I heard. I don't know if that's accurate, but um, you, have the, you have an oil tank, you have a fuel tank, and it's called a total loss system. Uh, so I don't know, I heard Matt from Wheels Through Time, he's the guru on these engines, talk about how um, a lot of times a crankcase would fill up with oil and it would be like trying to, to run through molasses. Uh, in other words, it wouldn't run as good until that, that oil burned off. We only rode it maybe 15, 20 miles combined around town here. Uh, so I don't, know, I don't know if that's why it's smoking or whether it, it has an issue with a valve or something like that. I don't know, but um, in any event, uh, check out the tires. Can you zoom in real close on the tires? And let, let me get, a, let me get a, a, a flashlight so we can show the guys the tires. We were checking the date codes on these tires. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. First of all, it says military on there. And this is the 44th week of 1960. This tire is 66 years old and it still looks good and usable, which is remarkable. Um, just a testimony to Mr. Zahner's uh, Ability to keep and look at look at the chrome on the front wheel. The chrome on the front wheel is remarkable. Um, Bakersfield, California, no snow, no salt. They painted the exhaust white with like a ceramic coating, which is something, and they painted the bike red. It was originally, I believe, an olive drab color, but um, that's the original fuel tank, original tins, original frame, original engine, original forks. Um, the chrome on the rear wheel looks really good. The spokes look good. The chain and sprockets are, are I'm going to say, 80% of the life left on them, and. Um, Man, just 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 an honor. Check the, check out check this out. Look at the number on the transmission. 25-4164. Even I can see that. There's big letters for the old guys. Freaking man, what what a machine. Kick starts really easy. Uh, like I said, I hope hope you enjoyed the riding as much as portion as much as I had. Ironically, with the um, we put a new battery in it in, in a just a testimony to Mr. Zahner's mechanical ability. The uh, headlight, which, can you read the, the logo on there? It says S&M Lamp Company. S&M Lamp Company, Los Angeles, California. How freaking cool. cool is that? The headlight and taillight work on it, which is uh, well, uh, uh, probably better than most, most Triumphs from the 70s, right? <laughs> so show them how the, the taillight, too. So we went through the bike, gave it a full 100-point check over during the recommissioning process. Uh, you, Billy, go ahead and tell them about the brake. The rear the brake. external expanding brake? Yes. Yeah, that, uh, it's a, basically a drum hung on the hub there, and it's got a band around the outside with asbestos on it that drags on the drum. I mean, it's external, everything's outside, so when it gets wet, it probably doesn't work very well. That's why going to a, a front brake that's internal expanding, it was really a huge upgrade. So going fast is good, but being able to stop is also important. I have the work order here. Uh, Jimmy Laurinaitis, one of our lead techs here, he, uh, Jimmy is an absolute freaking genius. Um, it's a toss up between him and the man in mechanic who has the highest IQ, but we're blessed to have some superstars on the team like Jimmy. In fact, Jimmy won a national troubleshooting contest when he was in high school against every high school in the, in the, in the country. Uh, and uh, he has a super high IQ. He's, uh, he's, so we had him, of course, work on this bike. He's, he's, he builds pro street race cars and, and, and race bikes and modern Harleys. And so he took like a fish to water the opportunity to work on this. We didn't have to ask him twice, but I have the work order that Jimmy Laurinaitis worked on this bike. And um, Jimmy's a real inspiration. I just want to add that too. Jimmy had heart replacement surgery 10 years ago and uh, volunteers a couple days a week here at the shop. And he's here because he doesn't have to be here. He's here because he, he, he loves this stuff as much as, as we do. He's one of us for sure. Phenomenal, phenomenal uh, 
technician, mechanic, and, and brilliant. But anyway, this, uh, he put a new six volt heavy duty battery in it, removed, inspected, and cleaned the spark plugs. These are the original spark plugs that came here with, which um, we're pro we probably should have put a new set in it. Maybe it would have run a little bit better, but he said they were fine. So, uh, we're, 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 you know, so um, the spark checked excellent. He did a full carburetor cleaning service, put a new carb float assembly on it, cleaned the fuel filter. The fuel tanks were inspected and are clean. He inspected, cleaned, and lubed the throttle and the cable, inspected, cleaned, and lubed the spark advance mechanism. He put drops of mystery oil in the cylinders as a preventative measure before he fired it up, uh, put fresh 2850 engine oil in for the initial startup, started it on the workbench, ran with no issues, idled properly. Then he drained the 2850 oil after the initial heat cycle and replaced the engine oil with straight 50 weight oil. He removed the wheels and the brakes for inspection, cleaned and greased all the brake hardware pivot points and all the grease points on the bike. Um, let's see, remove the tires and replace the tubes. So it's got new tubes in there. Replace the wheels and set the tire pressures. Serviced all the grease fittings. And there's a bunch of grease fittings everywhere on this bike. That's why they last forever, you know. It's, um, most bikes don't have that, you know. So, uh, and they test wrote it to verify the functionality of the engine, clutch, transmission, and brakes. All electrical functions checked operational. And he, his note was, wow, an amazing machine, a true time capsule. So, guys. Sadly, uh, we have to put this up for sale. We kind of went out on a limb and spent over $400,000 on motorcycles in the last month and a couple months. So um, we have to sell some, some of them to keep the continuation fund for the, the museum is wholly supported by the Kaplan Cycles motorcycle sales and uh, by all the volunteers that we have here. So this is an exceptional, exceptional opportunity to own a 28 Harley JD that you can use as a rider. Um, or to, to display it here at the museum if you want to leave it here as an investment. Many of the bikes in the museum here are on loan, so or, or bring it to shows or whatever you want to do with it. If, if, if you buy it, that's it, it's up to you. But heck, you could take this and set it up and run the Cannonball Run. I understand these are one of the more popular motorcycles for the Cannonball Runner. If you're not sure what that is, it's a 4,000 mile cross country adventure uh, on bikes, and this this 28 JD is it, the exact same model that John Parham, the former owner of the National Motorcycle Museum, rode cross country with his riding partner. Um, spectacular, spectacular piece of Americana. Uh, they're going up for sale. Um, we don't have to sell all of them, so, um, but we do have to sell some of them. So it, bid high and bid often. I add that uh, this motorcycle right here was the motorcycle of choice for the motorcycle clubs in the Bakersfield, California area that were forming all over the country after World War II. There were, these bikes were around, they were available, they were affordable. It was this or an Indian, really, because the Japanese bikes didn't exist yet. And they would take them and modify them, and what they would do is they'd cut the fenders down. Luckily, they did, nothing else was done to this bike because it would be very easy to restore it back to original. But this is a snapshot in time of the 50s, the 40s and 50s, where the clubs were just starting to start up and uh, the camaraderie of motorcycle riding throughout the country. And, and th this was the bike to have for sure. As I'm not alone to tell you that I was beyond excited when, when uh, Mark called us and invited us out to his home and we hit it off like brothers right off of Jump Street. And there were other people that came out and looked at his collection and um, insulted him with low ball offers. He gave us a price. We, we, we gave him a price a little bit less. We met in the middle and it was a done deal. And, but it, not, it's not about that. What I wanna say is how excited I've been for the last two months to have these bikes in our possession and what an honor it is to ride this bike today. And I rode the 42 today. It just, it just absolutely tickled pink and I'm not alone. Uh, Billy, Billy Blythe is standing right behind me here. I, I would have to say we are a little bit jaded. You and I have been going to Daytona for 30 something years. You raced at Daytona all these years. You've been at all the vintage rallies. What, what, are this, what does this bike mean to you, Billy? This bike is it, just, it's oozing with character, and it represents a period of time that's becoming forgotten about. You know, people are bobbing bikes today, uh, and they're kind of replicating what this was, and, and basically that technique was invented at this particular time. Uh, this bike has got me so excited, and, you know, I've had plenty of exciting times on motorcycles over the years, this, this bike just rings the bell for me. It absolutely rings the bell. Riding, for me, was an absolute privilege. And to hear it run was like remarkable. So all those things can be had if you were to buy this bike and own it today, really. Uh, and to ride it, there's not a single head that's not going to turn when you go by. 
It makes that beautiful sound, and it has that look about it, like from a period that's uh, you know quite a long time ago now. Probably the 1950s is when this bike was put together like this. Remarkable, remarkable. Time capsule to the max. When we got this bike in, and Jimmy got it running, and we all talked about it, we, we talked about maybe buying the fenders and putting it back to, to stock and painting it, and everybody was like, no, leave it alone. This is a, time, this is a piece of a, 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 time, a time shot, a time capsule. And we, so we took great pains not to, uh, you know, we got the bike running and rode it and it w went to the detail shop. Ronnie and me and three other guys worked on it for about an hour. So there might be five hours of cleaning time on this, but it was all with toothbrushes and, and a bucket of water. We didn't power wash the engine. We used a chain clean on the, on the chain. We used um, glass cleaner uh, on the rims. Uh, there was no oil, there was no like um, tire dressing. Leo uh, put the, took the tire dressing out here and, and, and I thought he just had a regular rack and he starts rubbing tire dressing on the side of the tire and making sure I'm like, whoa, stop. I go, what are you doing? You know, uh, let's not paint this thing. Uh, let, let's, let's, let's just clean it. Let's not, because sometimes, you know, you put the tire dressing on it, it makes them look new. These are 60 year old tires, man. So uh, we did use new coat, uh, the, the Lars Anderson Museum, the, the curator of the Lars Anderson Museum taught me about new coat. We love that stuff. We use it on all our vehicles. He's got a Corvette that was painted 40 years ago that regularly wins concourse shows. It's a once a year polymer um, wax that you put on there. So we did, we did wax the paint, it, so it's got a little shine on it, uh, but we didn't, we didn't want to overdo it. We didn't want to put a paintbrush to it. You can see the cylinders. We, have, we, have the, we own the New England Motorcycle Museum, right? We have the ability to restore machines from, from the frame up. We could have done that, but we wanted to keep the originality, and we felt like, like that was the coolest part about the bike was, was if you zoom in on the cylinders, they're starting to the, 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 the have a little bit of um, patina there, you know, and, and uh, we didn't want to mess with that, you know. So the pipes were painted with this, this white paint probably 50 years ago. So we, we left it alone, man. And uh, that's up to you if you buy it. As, far, as long as it's in our care, it's staying exactly the way it is. <laughs> so, and it's going to be on display on the second floor of the museum here. If you want to come check it out, we're open every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, you can come during the week. We're here too. But our tour guide, Moses, is, is here on, on the weekend. So um, if you have any questions about it, give us a call, 860-454-7024. We ship bikes worldwide. We are the largest motorcycle, classic motorcycle sales sales and restoration organization in the United States of America today. Nobody does what we do to the degree that we do or has as many bikes come through or, or buys as many collections. If you have a collection like the Zahners, give us a call. Um, I'll fly out that week and, and, and take a look at it. And uh, um, just like I said, an honor to have this bike. And I've had a lot of fun just being in the presence of this, this piece of, this piece of uh, Americana. So uh, my son, Kenny Jr., give us a call. He can help you if you want to ship this bike any in the, anywhere in the world. We can also, we can actually finance these through Freedom Road and probably a much better investment to buy this and it would be a, a new Harley because this is going up in value where a new Harley's gonna go down in value for 20 years until it becomes a classic. So this one's long ago uh, started uh, appreciating in value and it will continue to because far few and less of them will be here in the States. I hope it stays here in the States. Hope it stays at the museum. I'd love to have it here. Thank you for watching. And as always, God bless Harley Davidson. God bless you all. And God bless the United States of America.